What up, anybody, and welcome to another episode of the SBR Podcast. Woo. Woo. <laughs> today, today, we got this R&B singer on the way. Let me introduce to you. His name is Jaden Jess E. Yes, that's me. What's up, guys? How you doing? What's up, SBR? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Glad that you're you are here yeah man we've been trying to get this done for for a little while now and uh I, I gotta say that's that's partly my fault um i i man including music i work two jobs so i get busy as heck but um but i'm glad we finally got to do it man and uh yeah it's, uh, it's great to be here thank you for having me no problem anytime so all right uh Jayton, so i'm gonna ask you 10 questions about your musical standpoint career that you had when you were and some stuff that you know outside of the music yep and no worries, man. if you want to keep going with your answers uh you have to keep it longer but if you don't want to you gotta keep it a bit shorter yeah it's kind of hard to get me to stop talking sometimes i, I talk a lot um <laughs> And don't worry, it's not going to be that long. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. First question, how did you start making music? Well, uh, I officially started making music and recording when I was about uh, 10. I was in year six uh, in primary school, actually, and I, I got a Guitar Hero mic that I had with, with my uh, Guitar Hero PlayStation 2 game. Um, and I was just, I plugged that into the computer and... I was just recording on there. My brother was very, you know, uh, technically minded with computers and everything. So he he researched and he knew what to do. And I, I started recording on Mixcraft. Um, uh, really, honestly, looking at it now, wasn't a great uh, <laughs> recording software. Um, but I mean, I could do a lot on it, man. And I I would would upload my my covers to YouTube. Um, I believe it was it was oh seven or oh eight when I started up um, two thousand seven or two thousand and eight when I started uploading my covers to YouTube. Um, back then, it was a lot of I, I used a lot of auto tune, <laughs> um, a lot of auto tune, and it it you know because I I was. I mean, I was very into T-Pain at that stage. So I was, I was very much wanting to, not really wanting to get that sound, but also just liking the way that sounded. Um, but, you know, as, as time went on, I kind of backed off from the auto-tune a little bit. And, you know, I've, I've learned a lot over the, over the years. I mean, I, I started producing my own music and making my own beats um, in about 2014 when I, when I first got a, a MacBook Pro laptop um and you know i started out on garage band and moved on to logic pro and i mean i still use logic pro to this day man i, I use it for all of my recording all of my songs i record them mix and master them myself for the most part sometimes i uh outsource the mixing and mastering but yeah man i just uh just yeah <laughs> i keep it I keep it moving man because I just gotta, I gotta keep cranking out music. <laughs> right. Next question: What kind of music genre do you get into? Well, okay. So, growing up, I listened to a lot of um, R and B uh, and a lot of pop music. But I mean, say so I listened to a lot of uh, boys and men growing up. I listened to. Uh, a lot of Michael Jackson and stuff like that. So the, all of that very much inspired me. And I mean, now, of course, I make R&B music. Uh, when I started out, I was making pop uh, when I first released some stuff in 2015. But uh, now I've, I've kind of found my, my pocket in R&B. Um, I mean, even to the point now, like I, I used to rap quite a bit and i mean i think on on this album that i've got coming up in the next couple months i've only got one track on the whole album uh that i'm actually rapping on other than that it's pretty much just singing man because even when it comes to rapping i've i kind of i like the rapping style but now i've started doing it with a melody and making it more r&b um 
So I just want it to be kind of more unique to me rather than because I, I don't really think I have the best voice for rapping. I don't mind it, but it's just I, I, I think singing, but with a rap perspective is much more pleasing to the ear for me. And it's, it's much more digestible, uh, especially for somebody going into an R&B album. So, yeah. Next question now. A lot of people feel curious about what kind of musicians that you would you like to work in the future. Probably it'll be possible when you get to like get attractive to musical standpoint. But this next question: Which kind of musicians would you ever like if you ever had a chance to work with? Okay, so R and B wise. Uh, I would love to work with. I think top of top of my list is Kailani. Um, she would be incredible to work with. I mean, I mean, if we go old school as well, Boys to Men would be amazing, or even just one of the guys from Boys to Men. But Kailani, everything that she puts out is just absolute fire. Her voice is amazing. Um, I think she would be top of my list. Um, hip hop wise, I mean, I would love to work with Eminem, Royce, Black Thought from the Roots. I mean, but that's aiming quite high, uh, <laughs> and I understand that. But I, I just, I, I have a deep uh, love and appreciation for lyrical hip hop. I really do. I, I. I would love to work with some more lyrical hip hop artists because it's just it's just something that I've always kind of gravitated towards, and especially now that I can understand punchlines and everything like that, and and the metaphors, I I just have a deep appreciation for it even more now. So yeah, rappers like Eminem and Royce and Black Thought are just people that I would love to work with for sure. That'd be sick. <laughs> Next question: What are your future plans outside of music? Outside of music, um, I well, even though it kind of has something to do with music, uh, I do eventually want to, at least temporarily, uh, move to LA. Um, that's something that I've I've wanted to do for a while now, uh, but unfortunately. Uh, of course, well, one thing, I mean, I'm a full-time carer for my mum at the moment. Uh, she's in stage five renal failure. So that kind of threw a spanner into the works. Um, so there was that. And then also um, COVID, man, <laughs> COVID came along. It's just like not only would that have stopped me from traveling anyway, but also when it comes to because my mum needs a kidney transplant, um that kind of that prolonged that process as well um so everything is kind of moved back um but i mean you know i'm i'm here as long as i'm needed of course and you know i uh, i mean I, I can't complain too much i mean um any time that i have free time is when i can work on music uh and you know i'm i'm working from home so i guess that's that's good as well um so yeah, I mean, outside of music, I just want to, I want to get mum that transplant. <laughs> I want to make sure she gets that transplant, and uh, I want to, I want to temporarily move to LA, man, and just do some networking and uh, work on music over there because I just think R and B would be much more, um, it'd be much more accepted widely over there rather than what it is here in Australia. Next question. What's your favorite food that you have been eating through your entire life? Okay, so my, my dad uh, is, because I'm half Indian. My dad is Indian, born in Fiji. Um, so he makes this awesome um, chicken curry that he makes with, with coconut cream. Um, that is like my favorite thing ever. Uh, and I mean, luckily, because my dad lives in Sydney now, but um, my mum, of course, learned how to make it uh, from while she while they were together. So um, she still makes it, and it's still it's still one of my favourite things to eat, man. I just it's it's the epitome of just comfort food, and you know it's it's just it's 
it, it makes you feel at home. It really does. <laughs> so that's your favorite food, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, that and flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> I eat way too many of those. <laughs> Next question: How much have you been progressing through your music? I mean, it's it's been sl slow but sure, man. I mean, I I would much rather be going at a at a slower pace, but getting recognized at that pace rather than it. And all of a sudden, be you know, place place with a bunch of things that I that I can't handle mentally or physically. You know, I mean, if you know, if if just tomorrow, all of a sudden, I'm being flown to LA, I'm starting to go on tour, or whatever whatever the case may be. You know, I I can't guarantee that right now I'm mentally equipped for that. Um, but you know, at, at, at this rate that I'm doing, you know, I'm releasing music online and everything like that. And, you know, it's doing pretty well. I mean, uh, um, I think I'm sitting at about 16,000 plus streams on each streaming service, you know, which isn't a whole lot, but it's, you know, it's, it's a nice little bit and, you know, I'm kind of. I'm, I'm kind of people's dirty secret at the moment, you know, people, <laughs> people, people who know, they know and they listen to me and, you know, but I mean, I've still got a long way to go and, you know, I'm, I'm always going to say it that way. And I can, I can always, um, I can always progress more and I can always get better at what I do. Um, especially considering that like, you know, I do pretty much everything myself when it comes to recording, mixing, mastering, um, everything like that, you know, it's just I I'm, I can just keep getting better and better and um, I'm getting there slowly but surely for sure. Um, next question. Uh, so in outside of the music and standpoint, uh, back in the day you were playing video games. So and I don't know last week or last month I saw your Twitch stream. They was playing yeah. a video game, Resident Evil. Yes, yes. But the question is, in my mind, what's your favorite uh, video game they have been playing for longer? Okay, so f favorite video game, I think anything Mario, to be honest, anything Nintendo for the most part, but definitely like a lot of things Mario. I mean, I think my favorite game would have to be Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, it is the game that I've I've played I've played that through about ten times um, <laughs> total, and then I mean especially since I got it on Switch recently as well, you know I played through it again, and you know I just I love that game it's so good but I mean I then also like I, I play very different games like I one side of the spectrum like I'll play Resident Evil like you saw on Twitch and I love those like scary horror kind of games but then also I'll play something random as hell like power washing simulator or house flipper you know like <laughs> I will play these simulator games and they're, they're just so relaxing and I I will spend hours just power washing a whole house or something like that just because it's it's relaxing and i like it like i don't know man like that and and that i i don't know if that's just me being weird and me i I'm, i might be bipolar i don't know but <laughs> i mean <laughs> going from one side of the spectrum being like oh yeah i'm playing a horror game oh yeah i'm scared to the other side and being like I'm so relaxed right now and I can do this for like four hours. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I thought, uh, there, might, there might be something wrong with me. I mean, it might even just be my ADHD. I don't know, but we will see. <laughs> we will find out later. Maybe I'll get diagnosed with something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, now, next question. What music means to you when it comes to experiment with? Well, um, see, th this is something that I've actually thought of quite recently with, with working on this this new album, um, because I realised after a while, like, 
so for my first uh, full album, uh, Love and Pain, I was very, um, I was very experimental with it. You know, things like panning and, you know, little kind of ear candy things, just like little things that people would hear if they're listening to headphones, but maybe not so much if they were listening, of course, like maybe through a phone speaker or something like that, you know, little things like that. And then I noticed during when I was making Honest, um, I didn't do that as much and it kind of and like recently i realized that and it kind of it kind of upset me a bit because i'm just like well i it i the last thing i want to do is as much as i want to make music that sounds um good to the modern listener and something this is something kind of similar i guess to what they've heard before i also want to make something that makes me stand out and unfortunately like I'm, I'm not saying that that things on on honest didn't stand out of course they did i mean i had a song with Screwface john on there that was that was fun as hell but you know i i think it's more just with my mixing techniques and um stuff like that that i just i i've realized that i need to get back into more and just um really hone in on it because otherwise it's just uh, I, I i don't want people to be listening to a three minute song of mine and be thinking when is it over how long has it been going or whatever like that i want them to be thinking during a three minute song okay that okay like that that was maybe kind of a little bit short it was enough but I could have done with more. That would have been awesome if there was more, you know, like, and that, that's something that I found as well with like doing <laughs> some, some songs like that I've done and a lot of songs that are coming out these days, like are hitting just the two and a half minute mark and stuff like that, you know, and there's just so much condensed into that amount of time. And then, you know, when it's done, you're like, okay, that was sick. That two and a half minutes, I do want more. But then that also just gives me incentive to run it back again and listen to it over again. That's something that I've kind of been working on more and, you know, giving, giving people, uh, uh, you know, keeping people interested for that three minutes or whatever the, the song, however long the song is. I mean, it depends on how many, how many minutes have you been taking, like four minutes straight. Yeah, I, I kind of shied away from doing four-minute songs recently. I had a few of them on, on Love and Pain, the first album, but, you know, I kind of shied away from that a bit because I'm just like, I mean, if, if I can really make a song interesting for that four minutes, five minutes, whatever, then that's I guess that's okay. But otherwise, I just think people don't want you to waste their time. If they if they're gonna want to listen, they're gonna want to listen, you know, for the two and a half minutes, three minutes, or whatever that they've allocated, and then it's just like, well, um, I, this is getting a bit long in the tooth now. I, you know, I don't I don't really want them to be feeling like that. Next question: Once again, outside of the music. Now, back in the day, you was like, I don't know, really satisfied. But the next question, have you been satisfied with your life? Um, I mean, to an extent, I, I get, I get burnt out quite, uh, quite frequently, unfortunately. And that's mainly because, I mean, I'm, I'm doing music, I'm trying to promote it and I'm trying to get it out there, but also I'm full-time carer for my mum, and, you know, we, we do hemodialysis at home. And so a lot of the time, especially if we have appointments during the day, we're doing it at a night time and we'll start dialysis at about seven o'clock at night and we won't finish until one o'clock in the morning or something like that. And then it takes me a while to wind down as well. So, you know, I don't go to sleep straight away. So sometimes I don't end up sleeping until like three o'clock in the morning. And then I get up at nine, like I only get six hours of sleep, you know. So I, I, I tend to get burnt out quite often. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with where I'm at with the fact that, you know, I, 
one, I'm, I'm getting to look after my mum who really needs it. Um, and also the fact that, you know, I've been able to be at home and work on music whenever I have that free time. Because, I mean, if I, if I was working any regular job, I would, be, I would have travel in between. And, you know, by the time I've traveled and come back home and whatever, I just sometimes I, I, I wouldn't even probably feel like doing music, you know, but luckily I'm at home. I literally just have to go to the other end of the house and I'm just like, okay, I could work on some music right now. I'll do a bit of mixing or, I'll, or I'll do some recording if I really feel like it. And, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm blessed in that way. I am. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with where I'm at. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I'm always, I'm, I'm always going to want to strive for more. So. And final question of the day, what kind of message would you like to provide in musical standpoint? The main message that I want to provide is just, I, I honestly think that a- anybody can do music now. I, I think that, you know, because, I mean, there's, there's people who are just, um, yeah, like, they can upload music to SoundCloud and they can, you know, all of a sudden they can get like a thousand plays or whatever, you know. So I just really think that anybody can do music. They just have to, they have, to have their heart in it. Um, and that that's really the main message that I want to provide. I mean, that's the thing. I've now... I'm I'm about to release my third album that I've recorded in my bedroom. I mean, recorded, produced, mixed, mastered all in my bedroom. Um, you know, that's, that's the thing that I, 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 I want people to know that like, it's just these days, the technology is there and you like, I, I have, I have a nice iMac. Yes, I do. People could have, a, a cheap as heck laptop even software that they could use that run on there they could use audacity or something like that to even just start you know so that i think that's that's the main thing that i want to put out there is just people if if their heart's really in it and their passion is really in it then they should they should go for it man because that that's what i did and that's what i'm still doing well that was it folks um JJ, if you have anything to say to our outro, can you please make it quicker before it enters? Yes. Um, so thank you very much for having me as we are. Um, thank you everybody for watching. Um, yeah, man, this, this has been great. Um, thank you so much for having me and we should, uh, we should, we should chat some other time, man. We should chat again. <laughs> Definitely. All right. And I will see you guys in the next episode. The links of the social media will be down in the description below. So as JJ's social media, of course. Follow him there.